My name's Nadia. I'm a full-time simulation fellow here currently. My normal job is as a medical registrar, but I've taken on this role in the education department for this year. Um, we just started running simulations here about two or three months ago, so it's all quite new and very exciting. We're doing simulation work with everybody from foundation doctors to more senior doctors, nurses, um, physios, everyone can sort of benefit from the facilities here. We've currently got two uh, mannequins here. We've got Sim Man, also known as Leslie, um, who is a 3G high fidelity simulator that can be used for all sorts of emergency scenarios. And in particular, he's useful for looking at the sort of non-technical aspects um, that simulation can help to teach. So teamwork and leadership um, and communication skills in critical scenarios. We've also got Sim Baby, also known as Daisy. Um, and we've been doing some work with her again with a variety of different people including the foundation doctors. So usually we do it in very small groups, we'd say a maximum of six per group and a maximum of three around Sim Man or Sim Baby at any one time during the scenarios and that just helps with them all getting a chance to get a go and with the realism of the scenario where you wouldn't have hundreds of people around to help. Um, the types of things we've run so far is acute anaphylaxis, severe sepsis, um, any sort of peri-arrest situations. We've been doing some things with the A&E team and the paediatric team on paediatric trauma, head injuries, those sorts of things that we just don't get to see as often as we would like people to be able to get a chance to, to get involved. This gives them the chance to be watched in those scenarios and learn in a very safe environment where we can stop the scenario if things are going wrong or uh, intervene and then debrief afterwards so that they all take away a significant learning from the simulation. They seem to really get into it, so during situations you can see that they are actually probably as nervous as they would be in real life and they do really get involved in the simulation, but there is just that backup there of knowing this isn't in real life, nothing bad is going to happen. We can go through it bit by bit afterwards and work out what went well, what they could perhaps do differently next time, and then they can take that learning back into the workplace. Although simulation's been around for a few years and in some places it's still quite a relatively new teaching modality in particular for the junior doctors. Specifically for the foundation doctors it opens up a really wide range of scenarios that we can run for them. Sometimes some of the foundation doctors have struggled to get some things on their curriculum signed off because they're events that don't occur very often and when they do occur there doesn't tend to be a lot of people around to observe them seeing very sick patients. This gives us a chance to simulate those sorts of scenarios and they can be watched and have one-to-one -one feedback on how they did, which they seem to really enjoy and they like having that detail of feedback. But this trust is really keen on looking at patient safety um, management and improving patient safety and simulation is a really good way to try and improve that. So one of the things we're doing here is taking some of the critical situations or serious untoward events that have happened within the trust, particularly those that have involved junior doctors, and getting them created into simulated scenarios to rerun so that we can really learn from our mistakes and look at things that happened previously and how we can learn from those and improve things and run them better if anything was to happen in a similar situation again. The junior doctors, as well as being involved in coming up to learn and be involved in the simulation, we're also very keen that they get practice at teaching. Um, so they're getting involved with things like teaching the medical students or some of the nurses or nursing students. So in that way they get a chance to sort of be on the other side of the fence as well and um, develop their skills in other areas than, than their core curriculum. I've been involved in teaching uh, both medical students and junior, doc junior doctors for quite a few years now and simulation in particular is a really enjoyable way to teach. You can see that they're getting an awful lot out of it. You can see their confidence improving each time they run more difficult scenarios and they really get involved with it and then that's a real pleasure to see them all improving. These are the junior doctors that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm out on the wards doing my normal job as a medical registrar so it's in my best interest to have them as trained up as quickly as possible as well. I think North Tees has got a reputation amongst all of the junior doctors as being somewhere that's a really friendly place to work. All of the senior doctors and nurses are very approachable, very friendly and very happy to offer advice. There's a lot of the consultants are very keen in getting involved with education and moving things forward and the simulation suite is kind of one of the examples of that. 